Welcome to Life Extension Live. I'm Dr. Mike, and I'm here with my co-host, Dr. Crystal. And today we're going to talk about bloating. You know, that 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 uncomfortable feeling that many of us uh, occasionally have. It's it's just, it's not fun to feel bloated, Dr. Crystal. It just, it's uncomfortable. It just makes, you can't get, you can't, you just don't, you can't do things right. You know what I mean? That's you can't like, wear, look, for me, you, you can't, can't wear the outfit you really want to wear. You know, that dress right. that's supposed to be this A-line dress. <laughs> now you have to change your outfit because you've got a little bloat. You don't know what's going on or why. And uh, yeah, so yeah. a lot of people experience occasional bloating and it can happen from certain foods. Um, you know, some foods can cause bloating more than others. And we're, we'll get into that. Uh, but I mean, ultimately, what we want to try to do for people is provide good solutions. So on today's show, we're going to talk about why we get bloated. We're going to talk about foods that can cause bloating. And then, of course, we're going to wrap it all up with nutrients that can help you feel better and put on your A-line dress. I'm not even sure what that means, but that's what Dr. <laughs> Crystal said. All right. So let's go ahead and get right into this. Um, you know, I, 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 I have my opinion about causes and stuff like that, uh -huh. but I, I know... I know you have a nice list here for us to cover with everyone. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of let you run through this and I'm going to interject yeah. a couple of times because I've had some experience with some of this stuff. Well, we all know that feeling after we have maybe gone to a buffet or maybe gone to a party <laughs> and, you know, the just uh, good vibrations and you're snacking on this and you're snacking on that and you're eating this or that. And you ignore those signals that you're full. So obviously the overeating, the bloat that can yeah. result from overeating. And, and that's, and that. so my first interjection is I feel like that pretty much all of the month of December. <laughs> the entire month? Well, yeah, because you know how it is. It's not just like my friends having parties and stuff. I mean, we have work stuff. Remember all that? I mean, you know, it's been a while, but remember the work uh, Christmas, I just feel like I'm always like, eat, like always. That's eat. true. And, and then you just feel like the whole month, I'm just like, uh, boom, boom, boom. well, it starts with Thanksgiving, you know that, right? So yeah, it's yeah. Like from Thanksgiving, November. Yes, Thanksgiving to January 1st, I feel bloated. And then we make our New Year's resolutions <laughs> to not feel bloated. <laughs> All right, so, so, so yes, over, so over eating. Cause, yeah, yeah. Eating too fast, which so many people do. I mean, I see, I sit down with my husband. He's done in maybe three minutes. I'm a slow eater. So it's me and the kids at the table. Yeah. Usually he's done. He's it's gone. <laughs> We're there for another 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, but yes, eating too fast. I, got that one. I, got a story. I, I have a story there too. <laughs> when I was a kid, no, this is true. So I was the youngest of five. And when we sat at the dinner table, I had to eat so fast so my brother and sisters didn't take my food that my mom actually at times would like set me aside by myself so I could have my own little table, my own little plate, and I would slow down because I would eat so fast, I'd get bloated, and then I often threw up. Now, this is when I was like a five, six, seven-year-old kid, so I relate to that too. Wow, Dr. Mike, that's really traumatic. You may need to get some therapy for that. <laughs> oh, therapy is long. I can't do that. Either. <laughs> so uh, obviously it, the bloat could be related to the different foods that you're eating. Uh, right. People who are eating lots of plant-based foods, beans. Yes, <laughs> yes they, they, do. they have to promote the, the air and the gas. And then other times it's just, you know, maybe just slow motility. Maybe those muscles just need to, to work a little bit more to help to move that, fo that food through. Uh, we know that those are muscle contractions that's helping no. to kind of push that food through the digestive tract. So there are many, a, a, a variety mm -hmm. of, causes I'm gonna ask and you a question. The, yes I'm ask you a question what what about okay so um a, a couple years ago I mean, I, I was actually probably longer than this maybe four or five years ago um I was so intrigued with this product called a soda stream or a soda stream what something like I that. have one 
You do, so you have one day, like where you yeah. you you make your own carbonated beverages, right? And they yes. come with the the drips, and you can do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you put your your uh, container of the compressed air in the back. Yeah, and you have to yeah. switch to change that out. <laughs> you could, yeah, and I would always do the highest carbonation you could do. <laughs> I no, here's a funny story. So I drank that that kind of stuff all the time. I almost stopped drinking regular water. And that was, was that was your go-to. I was drinking so much carbonated water about a month after having that. I noticed that I was having like even at night, like I, I felt blood. I didn't feel good. I related it to that. I stopped doing it, and of course, it completely cleared up. So, what about carbonated? It, it, for me, it's a true story. I don't know if the research shows that carbonated yes. do that. Yes, you're right, Doctor Mike. That's one of when you start looking at what you're eating, what you're drinking, what could be contributing to some of your occasional bloat, mm -hmm. you can link it back to those carbonated drinks. Yeah. Now, of course, a little bit of a carbonated drink to help you get a good burp out. Yeah, and then nice. you kind of feel, <laughs> you feel good. We all know about yeah. that. Like, oh, I need a good burp. So, you know, occasionally, but when you're drinking those drinks, I guess, Dr. Mike, you kind of went overboard was what did. it sounds like. I did. Uh, yeah. I, I was I was drinking them all the time. Yeah, just that CO two, that carbonated, that's gas. You're but putting, I do love it. I love the way it feels. Cool. All those bubbles, yeah, those <laughs> bubbles have to go somewhere, you know. Yeah, so yeah. so that's yes, true. that is that is a cause. So limiting a carbonated beverages is one strategy to help to um, to reduce that occasional bloat. Of course. Look at your diet. Maybe you need to cut back on some of the dairy. Maybe you you uh, could use a few extra enzymes. Yeah, uh, I think that's important. I do. Mm -hmm. I think I think an enzyme digestive enzyme deficiency can, can be an issue. Um, so if you're bloated a lot, you know, look at what you're eating and maybe throw in some some enzymes right to help out. And I, I don't. Again, this is one of those things that I've just experienced, Dr. Crystal, as a clinician, you know, many years, um, you know, working in, in, in one of the big hospitals in Dallas, uh, a, a lot of postmenopausal women, hormonal issues causing bloating, constipation, a lot of GI stuff. I wonder if there's a connection there as well with hormone changes. The research is showing that one, we do know bloat occurs uh, more in women than men. And it's thought to be related to variations and fluctuations in hormones. Women, we we know, especially leading up to uh, when it's time for your menstrual cycle to start, that's the time where you don't plan to wear an yeah. A-line dress. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's when you wear the, the dresses that can kind of cover some of those um, some of those bloaty bellies, but yes, we do know there is the hormonal link, but something else that, uh, that you can start identifying is the sodium in your diet. We know sodium causes you to retain water, right? You're, and so limiting that point. sodium, yeah. maybe adding in some potassium, a, something that can help to balance out that sodium, um, drinking more water, uh, if and, and you maybe, are going to eat something salty, and, or, and maybe instead of the salt, add more spice, yeah, add more herbs. We've talked about that in a lot of shows, right? There's ways you can still get flavor and seasoning mm -hmm. without actually using salt and sodium, right? Yeah. Yep. Now, of course, my favorite fiber, See? and I, I put this on the list. Obviously, it can cause bloating, but I typically suggest. You know, you may have some bloating when you initially start adding in more and more fiber. If you're trying to reach those, reach those fiber recommendations, you may experience some initial bloat, but your body kind of gets used to that, to that fiber intake. But adding in water, I, I, I feel like the main concern with the fiber is you're not getting enough water to kind of help to move that fiber along. You don't want the fiber there and then yeah. it's stuck. Yeah, I think and then that's all those bacteria are fermenting and creating gas. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think no, I think that's an important point. It's it number one, your body you will adjust to the higher intake of fiber at some mm -hmm. point, but increase the water so you move that fiber through. I think that's going to help a lot of people. Right? Yes, 
And especially because we're, we, here's what's funny is we're telling everybody eat more plants, you know, eat more, you know, we talk about the 80, 20, 20 rule, right? 80% plant-based, 20% protein. People try that for a few days and they don't feel good. They're like, the plants must be bad for me. <laughs> they are not bad. That's the time where you add in a digestive enzyme, as you mentioned, yeah. Dr. Mike, there are digestive enzymes that can help to specifically target some of those components, some of those, um, like those fibers, that cellulose, what could be causing some of that, uh, that gas production. Right. Yeah. All this is all great stuff now, I, but at the end of the day, I think I, I want to move to the nutrients, right? Because yeah. there's a lot of good research for at least three key nutrients to help anyone, anybody that we've just described, whether it's carbonation, hormones, whatever that is, th these things can really help. And when we looked at this, Dr. Crystal, you and I quickly both saw that there's kind of like three main categories here. You have, you yes. have on one hand, uh, you have a nutrient that's going to help with bile flow. And we'll, we'll describe why that's important, right? And then we have a nutrient um, that is going to be really good for helping to speed up how fast you move things through your gut, right? Right. And then we have one for re, uh, reduction of gas production. So let's let's kind of focus like on those three because I think that's a really good way for people to remember this, right? So let's start with artichokes and bile. Why is that important? Right. So bile is uh, made in the the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and then released into the digestive tract to help you to. Uh, kind of emulsify, break down those fats so that the enzymes can get to the fats and do their job to, to help you to basically digest those fats. So anytime you have that bile kind of coming into the digestive tract, that is going to help to kind of move things along, help you to digest those foods properly. Uh, artichoke also contains some prebiotics that can help with overall the overall digestive health process. So that's that's one nutrient. Uh, the, now, me, before, before you go there, though, real quick. Um, it, so our, I love artichokes. I love eating artichokes. I think they're one of my favorite things to, to do, especially during summer months. Um, you know, I'm Greek. That was a huge thing. Our artichokes were huge in the Greek um, uh, diet during summer months. But we're talking. So eat artichokes, right, Dr. Crystal? But we're talking about supplementation here. Correct. We're talking about artichoke uh, leaf extract. Okay. Uh, where, you know, you're getting a standardized extract of the components in artichoke that have research. I mean, these are nutrients that we're going over are nutrients that have clinical research supporting their benefit to help with yeah. that occasional bloat. And, and, and as we said this before, the food is great, but the supplementation really is at the, the, the right standardization, the right dose, all that kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, if you were to eat as many artichokes as necessary to really impact bile, that would probably be too much fiber. And now you're bloated again. <laughs> well, that's a good point, Dr. Mike. Yeah. So supplementation. All right. The second one, I know you want to get into this because I, wait, I can't remember if you like this or you don't like this ginger. Oh, Dr. Mike, ginger well, I, is right up me. there with fiber. I mean, these are like the foods wait, I that I have my, my food shrine ginger will be there because it's just one of the best nutrients oh, for digestion. Now I, okay, now I, okay, there's something I was thinking of something else. Cause now I do remember at again, you guys uh, uh, audience watching Dr. Crystal at her desk has literally a grocery store. And I remember you introduced me to those ginger cubes. Oh yeah. With a little sugar on them. You remember that? And I would go, yeah. and I love those too. And we would sit there, we would eat the ginger cubes at your desk. Okay. So ginger is when you do like. Ginger in all forms. <laughs> and, why, and what is it doing for us specifically related to the bloat? Right. So we know that ginger uh, historic, uh, historically has been used to support digestion. It is very soothing. It provides comfort. Uh, to the digestive tract. And it's also helping uh, the stomach to empty a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of helping to get that food through, uh, out of the stomach, through the digestive tract. And 
And to me, it just tastes really good too. I mean, I'm just, it's, it's one of those ones where it's, it's a win-win when it comes to ginger. I, I do enjoy uh, ginger as well. And then the last one to help with reducing gas production overall is fennel seed oil. And I think that's an important part of this. It's not the fennel seed, it's the oil, right? Extract right. it from the fennel seed that helps to inhibit gas. How is it doing that? Yes. Yeah, so the fennel is inhibiting the activity of bacteria involved with creating the gas uh, in the digestive tract because we know that's how that gas is created, right? Those bacteria get in there and start, uh, it's basically the, the, the fibrous foods or, or the beans, it's starting to kind of ferment those in the back in the gas is a byproduct of that uh, metabolism or the, the the metabolic action produced by that bacteria. And so the fennel is kind of coming in and helping to put a stop to some of that. And right. we do know in research, fennel in and of itself is great. The fennel seed oil, when you combine it with a little bit of turmeric, uh, then it can uh, just kind of enhance the action of that fennel. Yeah. I think fennel is a great, and not so much the seed, but the, the leafy part is wonderful to add to salads. Adds a little crunch. Fennel adds a little kind of like peppery taste to things. Yeah. Um, but the fennel seed oil could, could help uh, uh, reduce your gas. So there you got artichokes, right? They are uh, stimulating bioproduction. That can be helpful. You got ginger helping to move things through. And it just soothes the the inside track of mm -hmm. your gut and then you have fennel seed oil helping to reduce gas production so here's the good news you know you don't have to choose between these three what did we do at life extension dr crystal because i know you have a bottle there you know i do uh we put it all together in a formula called bloat relief uh and the you take one soft gel daily before your heaviest meals, let me just make sure I have that. Yes, one soft gel twice daily before your heaviest meals. Uh, this formula is gluten-free, non-GMO. I have it here. My bottle's almost, almost gone. <laughs> <laughs> and you said you give this to your dad as well, right? He needs some yes, it's yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm visiting my parents. So uh, Dr. Mike said, hey, do you have a bottle? I said, I think I do. Man, <laughs> <laughs> I need your bloat relief. Yeah. Uh, and, and you can, and so, and you can yeah. take this um, with digestive enzymes as well, right? It's not that's not going to hurt the no, formula. No, it, it's actually a complement. They they complement each other. The digestive enzymes you can take, you know, before the meal, or even sometimes with with me, my digestive enzymes, if I eat a meal, because sometimes you don't know that that meal may be problematic. Until <laughs> after you, don't know, you don't know if it's going to keep you out of that A-line dress, which I still do not know what that is. Uh, anyway. And, and so the digestive enzymes, sometimes I'll take it right after a meal if I feel like that meal's just not sitting right and not kind of getting fully digested. Um, but these are the, the formulas Personally, Dr. Mike, I keep on deck. I may not take them every day, but it's when you yeah. when you want them, you don't want to be yeah. without them. That's I one think, thing for sure. You bring up a good point. Sometimes maybe a lot of people don't understand how bloat feels. You know, it's sometimes you obviously know, like you feel bloated, you feel bloated, but sometimes bloat can also just be just it doesn't feel right in your gut after you eat. You feel yeah. a little like I don't feel it doesn't feel comfortable. You know, that could be um, bloat as well. Now, listen, if we go, uh, we have a special landing page for this, right, Dr. Crystal? Lifeextension.com slash comfort. Because we want yes. you to feel better. <laughs> and we don't want you to bloat and feel bad. So lifeextension.com slash comfort. And if you go to that landing page, I think there's a little special offer there as well, right? Yes. Well, it's actually on sale, Dr. Mike. 45% uh, off right That's now. Good one. It's wow. on sale. Uh, so, hey, I would say now's the time to to stock up and and keep it in your arsenal. Yep. That's awesome. Dr. Crystal, thank you so much for joining me today. So that's 
Bloat Relief by Life Extension. Go check it out at lifeextension.com slash comfort. I'm Dr. Mike. I want to thank everyone for watching. Don't forget we go live every Wednesday. Um, so go ahead and register so you never miss a show. Take care.